Hey guys, today we're driving the 2023 Honda HRV. We are in a top trim EXL all wheel drive. Pricing on the HRV starts around $25,000 for the LX front wheel drive and goes up from there. This is about $30,590 as tested. We have a pretty nice looking interior, a continuously variable transmission, a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder that makes 158 horsepower taken straight from the Honda Civic, as you may have guessed. Only one powertrain option for the US, just in front wheel drive and all wheel drive configurations. Let's walk you around this new HRV. We'll show you what it looks like inside and out, and then we'll take it for a drive and give you guys some thoughts on what it's been like to live with this week. This is painted in Nordic Forest. It's a $395 paint option. We have 17 inch wheels, kind of a strange looking rump on this HRV bit bug-like and up front this just looks like a Ford Escape with some different body cladding down below kind of a strange looking design lifted wagon proportions wheels are a bit funny too in that the spokes or at least the silver part doesn't really connect to anything still you get a decent amount of sidewall on these I believe they're 215 60 R 17-inch tires Hankook Kinergy GTs a little bit more space on the inside of this HRV than some other compact crossovers in this class like the Mazda CX-30 very nice seats I like the contrast stitching plenty of legroom very spacious back here in this HRV I have about two and a half inches above my head I'm five foot ten seated behind myself you can see a similar looking interior to the Civic, but a few different appointments. It's actually a little bit more upscale. Functionally, this is a really nice interior to live with, and aesthetically, I think it looks pretty good too. One complaint though, is it smells funky in here. And we've driven a few HRVs, and there's something about the degassing of the plastics or the glues that they use in assembly are mm, not the best smelling. That'll go away though after a few months. So no worries there long term, but that new car smell that you're hoping for may not be the most pleasant in your new HRV. This takes regular fuel, gets 25 miles to the gallon in the city, 30 on the highway. Probably expect to achieve a little bit more than that on the highway, about 32 or so, but not the most fuel efficient crossover in this segment. We even get a compact spare tire underneath, that's great. Pull down these rear seats very easily and you get pretty much a flat loading surface. There's a little bit of a hump there, but a lot of cargo space in the back of this. This new HRV is considerably bigger on the outside than the previous generation and as a result does have some more interior space as well. Let's pop the hood, take a look at this two liter inline four cylinder. This is an engine that we drove briefly in the new Civic. This weighs about 3,300 pounds. It's a little bit heavier, but still gets around just fine. Take zero W20 oil. As you can see, there's a bunch of extra room in this engine bay for a hybrid powertrain, or maybe even a 1.5 liter turbo. Um, actually surprised not to see that 1.5 turbo in this HRV. I guess that's where the CRV comes in. All right, let's hop up front. We'll show you around the front seat a little bit and then we'll take this for a drive. All right, so pretty standard infotainment from Honda. Yes, it's just kind of a tablet thing slapped on the dash, but it's easily within reach and uh, it's not too far out of your plane of view from the road. All these physical controls in this interior make this a very easy crossover to live with on a daily basis. We have a nice looking reverse camera, super wide, not the highest resolution, but it's so wide angle that you can really see around corners in that, and that's pretty useful. Three different drive modes, normal, economy, and snow. The snow mode will actually give you a little bit of deceleration off throttle with the CVT, which is nice. Parking brakes right down here. There is even an off-road mode or hill descent mode. We have wireless charging right here, a couple of cup holders, 
auto climate control with dual zone, heated seats, unfortunately no heated steering wheel for your $30,000. Little traction control off button over there, auto up down windows for the front passengers though not for the rear, configurable digital gauge cluster which works great. We've got digital cluster on the left and then an analog speedometer on the right. Let's give you guys another look at the center console. This is actually really quite nice. You've got a USB charge point right here, another charge and plug point right there for the infotainment. You can also just connect wirelessly to CarPlay or Android Auto. Pretty good visibility all the way around too. Little sunroof up there. These visors slide nicely. Wonderful. All right, let's take this HRV for a drive. Substitute Topher drove this at the launch quite a while ago in Washington State, and this is my first time behind the wheel. This still feels a little bit more like a traditional continuously variable transmission. A whirs away in the background, no fake shifts or stepped gears of any type that I've noticed daily driving this just kind of casually around town. We've got a few creaks and rattles and vibrations from this interior. Not as tightly put together as the Civic or the CRV. That said though, it drives a lot like a lot of modern Hondas. Nice materials, nice feel through the wheel. Could use a little bit more power. No stop start system to worry about. If you're really hammering, it's going to mimic a gear change or two. Handles well. Feels a little bit lighter on its feet than some other crossovers in its class. Ride quality is excellent, no complaints there. Honda Sensing, Adaptive Cruise Control, Lane Keep Assist. Lane Keep Assist seems to work pretty well this week. The Adaptive Cruise is a bit on the conservative side though, braking a little bit more often than I would like. There's also a little bit of noise here on the highway. Probably about the same as what you'd see in the new Civic. Let's test out the sound system. sound system like you get in the new Civic and the new CRV and it shows it's not great doing a night drive today, but I will say a headlamp performance is pretty good in this HRV. Let's do a quick handling test here. Rotates surprisingly well 
and that all-wheel drive system does get this around a corner better than I was expecting. <laughs> I'd say the handling is kind of up there with the CX-30, it's up there with the Ford Escape. One of the more fun compact crossovers to sling around a corner. You wouldn't really think it, but it actually, I think this would be pretty fun on a back road. I remember Substitute Topher and Ted were having a pretty good time in one of these, and uh, I was surprised to learn that it handles very well in my time with it this week. I think just the powertrain's a little bit of a letdown. It would be nice to see the 1.5 turbo on this, or a hybrid powertrain, but Again, this 2.0-liter naturally aspirated engine is enough. It's fuel efficient enough. It's powerful enough. It's just a little bit, uh, a little bit grainy, a little bit loud under full throttle. But I think it's going to get the job done perfectly for most buyers of this vehicle. Nothing too class leading about this HRV, but it does strike a nice balance with price, features, interior space. Um, a Honda, so it's going to be safe. It's going to protect you and your family and passengers very well. But I do think it does lack some of the desirability from the Civic and uh, that just really solid feel and well honed niceness that the new CRV offers. That said, though, this is probably going to be a much more compelling vehicle than the previous generation HRV to most buyers who are looking at cars in this class. I don't even mind the CVT in this. Honda always does a nice job with their CVTs and they seem to be a bit more reliable than most too. Honda and Toyota both don't seem to have as many issues as some other manufacturers out there. It is a very smoothly tuned powertrain. No weird hiccups. And it puts its power down nicely. Probably wouldn't swing for the all-wheel drive unless if I absolutely needed it in the northern climate. Front-wheel drive car is probably a little bit lighter, a little bit simpler mechanically, but more fuel efficient. The front-wheel drive HRV gets about 32 miles to the gallon on the highway and 26 in the city. It's a little bit of an improvement there. All right, guys. Well, hopefully that's giving you a good idea of what the HRV looks like inside and out and what it's like to live with. Feel free to go check out Substitute Topher's review on this car. And let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.